Hey guys, I'd like to show you something really neat I figured out about health. Uh, I've been detoxing naturally for about four or five years now with iodine and nutritional balancing, and it wasn't until I started really understanding this methylation system that I was able to move forward and understand what was happening. So this process is pretty complex, but I'm going to show it to you in a really simplified form, and I'm going to use this one... Um, vitamin B9 to show you how it starts and how I see this this thing working. So I put together this graphic the other day which one of the synthetic vitamins is linked to a 21% increase or which one has the synthetic vitamin. Um, that's bread products, bread, cereal, all that type of stuff. Um, I explain a bit more of it on this page at my website sickoftired.com slash folate and I link up the um, studies that show all of this and the information that puts it all together. Um, I'm going to show you what this means inside our body. So this is the methylation system. This seems very complex, but it's really just a bunch of cookie recipes or whatever you want to look at. A car needs tires, oil, gas, a whole bunch of things to get it to go. If we're out of one of those, the system's not going to work properly and it's not going to be a car. If we don't have sugar and flour and whatever it takes to make cookies, we can't make cookies. It just doesn't work. If we don't have these things running properly, we can't make healthy humans. It's just that simple. And it's a bunch of different biochemical reactions that depend on the environment that we live in and the nutrients that we consume. So this process is actually extremely complex. Um, there's a lot more to this piece here, which is the core of the system. Um, if we start looking around in here, there's a lot of different vitamins, B6. Um, there's more B6. We've got some iron in there, oxygen. Um, there's B6 again, so it looks like B6 is pretty important. Um, Magnesium, ATP, I think there's a zinc somewhere. Yeah, there's probably zinc underneath there. Um, so this goes into an insane level of complexity. If we look at this, this is actually a still most likely incomplete um, diagram of our bio pathways because we still don't understand everything about life. Um, we recently figured out that there's most likely mitochondria living in our bloodstream outside of cells which is revolutionary and completely changes the way that things work. And then we recently just figured out that bacteria in our gut give off electricity, which is another huge change. When there's electricity being generated in areas, that's like a free energy system that's doing something that we don't yet understand. So now our gut and our bloodstream has extra pieces to it that we don't understand how or why they're functioning yet the science is settled and we understand that drugs are the best route to fix all this stuff which brings up the point that what happens is these drugs and chemicals go into specific pieces of these pathways and they say oh well this pathway here is not working because it doesn't have all the vitamins that it needed to get there or the person isn't getting enough sunlight or breathing or exercising enough so we'll give them this chemical and the person takes a the chemical, they feel a little bit better and then things continue to get worse because they're still not converting their vitamins into what they need to be, which is pieces of life. If we look at the cell now, it's hard to imagine. And I hoped that I was going to be able to make higher quality versions of this to show how important these cells are in our actual life. This is a microscopic view of us. If we look at our skin or brain or liver, there's these things to some degree in there turning nutrients into life. And when we become nutritionally depleted, this system becomes, the structure of it and everything becomes depleted. Just like if you don't maintain a building, it starts to crumble and it looks like crap and it doesn't work well. It leaks and all that stuff. The same thing is happening at a cellular level, and this structure is running this system. So when we finally run out of enough nutrients, we physically don't have the structure to run the system that converts other nutrients into the things that we need. So now we're sitting here with these broken cells and this system that can't function properly, 
and we have to slowly provide all of the stuff again to rebuild those cells. And that's what I've figured out. I was doing it with nutritional balancing from reading other resources, Dr. Larry Wilson, and following some other people that teach this information. And over time, I realized that I was like reverse engineering my methylation system by getting nutrients and purging toxins and feeling better. These systems in here end up with parasites and toxins in them. See, the problem is these metals that we're, we're becoming toxic with because of the, the environment that we've created on the planet are the food for parasites. People assume, I got a test, the stool test came back, no parasites. See, the problem with that is we have parasites in us as life. Candida can be a parasite. That's just one example. So to say a stool test came back for no parasites, essentially that's a lie without looking at a lot of stuff because we have parasites as part of us, so we can't say we don't have any. And without looking at numbers and a bunch of different situations, we can't figure out if the, the normal parasitic forms that are a part of us have become an issue or not. So... Parasites are a part of life. If you look at a, a shed that somebody didn't maintain, it begins to rot and bugs start to move in and eat the wood and then more bugs move in and then critters move in. That's life. That's how it works. The environment takes back the nutrients and gets ready to recycle them again. It's just part of the, the timeline. It's how things function. It's the same thing with life. When life has these um, substances that aren't supposed to be there, other parts of life come along naturally and eat them. And that's where we're at. Our cells are full of metals and there's actually parasites going into the cells. Those cells then create an environment that isn't proper. They're spitting out extra waste that shouldn't be there and they're not converting nutrients into things that we do need. And the whole entire environment is becoming gross and now parasites are moving in. This can be looked at like a slum. If an area is degraded and turned into a slum, more parasitic type of life forms are going to move in. It's going to become an even worse area. It's not just the, you know, inside the homes. It's the whole entire community becomes degraded. And that's the same thing as our body. The cells start to degrade, then the body degrades. So this is actually very simple then. What we need to do is get nutrition. But it's not as easy as just eating well and we're good to go. We've got these major deficits. We need to figure out what we're broken with and how to replenish them. And what worked for me was realizing that I was mercury toxic. And when I went after my mercury toxicity, I was able to finally clean out these systems and allow nutrition to get in there. And there's a bunch of stuff that's important for this. Iodine is a huge piece, except we don't we only want to start with a small amount of iodine because this whole system's broken. Iodine is like Windex on a really dirty window. If we had a filthy window that we could barely see through and we sp sprayed a whole bunch of Windex all over there and all we had was this little one napkin to wipe the window, we're going to have a mess all over the windowsill. The window's not going to become clean because we just don't have enough rags. That's what's kind of going on here. If we dump a bunch of iodine in here, our body has to do its best to keep the toxins that have been knocked off the window from landing on the windowsill. So it's just going to keep recycling them onto the window. And the way our body might do that could be wrapping it up in fat. It could be brain fog. It, it couldn't be a ton of things. It, it can put it right back into a tissue that's ready for it, that just happens to have the charge that's ready to grab those. So... Without having the rags on hand, which is this functioning cell and a functioning methylation system, we can't, it just doesn't work right. So if we go back to this uh, issue where this synthetic version of a uh, vitamin is linked to cancer, I'm going to show you why real quick. This is B12 deficiency. There's a lot of bad things in here. Tingling, muscle weakness, problems walking, vision loss, constipation memory loss, behavioral changes, behavioral changes like, you know, maybe getting mad or being short or having outbursts, just about anything. Um, folate itself, when it's low, is has horrible things like neural tube defects, which causes people to sometimes not even live through birth or being an infant. Cardiovascular disease, which kills like 30% of the people on the planet. 
cancer, which is like one in two and one in three chance, and cognitive dysfunction, which I think is pretty much crippling everybody by now. Um, the reason this is happening, or the reason that this is an issue with folic acid is because we have to depend on this gene. Uh, let me get to it. So folic acid needs to be converted into tetrahydrofolate, which is an activated form of folate. I'm just going to call that active folate for our body to be able to use it. To do this, we depend on a gene called DHFR, dihydrofolate reductase, which is just saying it's taking a type of folate and it's reducing it into another form. This gene, even when it's healthy, does not move quickly. And what's going on is the folic acid, the synthetic version of folate, it's not that the synthetic version is really a problem, it's that there's too much of it in our food. So naturally, this, this wheat flour has 45 mcg of folate in it. And then for whatever reason, man comes along and goes, let's add this synthetic version of folic acid at 206 mcg. Let's put four times as much folate in a synthetic version in enriched wheat flour which is in a whole bunch of people's diets and so if we look at the problem which is the fact that the gene that needs to convert this is slow no matter how healthy somebody is we're going to see why it is such a problem if we look at what folic acid does it needs to go through this dhfr gene in order to make it any further this is a slow gene, and while this gene is being used, if we look over here, folic acid causes this gene to be reduced or slowed down. This gene is what we use to run folate. So if we have folate and a huge amount of folic acid, the whole time this folic acid is available, it's going to slowly go through this gene and also slow down the natural folate. And in the end, we're just going to have a much slower drip of folate into our system. And when we don't have that, we don't run this system. And this is potentially where um, supplementing with methylfolate is an issue. Because if we're just providing an active, activated form of folate, we might not be running this whole entire system here. And that falls back on this original issue that if we have a ton of folic acid, we might not be running the system. So normally when we are running this system, folate gets converted. It m merges with B12 and recycles homocysteine back into methionine, which is protein that then uses magnesium to turn into SAMe. SAMe runs our dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, all types of stuff. It's pretty much our brain chemical factory. And without this SAMe, it doesn't function properly. SAMe can get used in, in problems like high histamine or histamine releases, depending on the foods that we're eating and our ability to reduce our histamines properly. So there's a lot of things that can wipe out our SAMe reserves and that becomes a huge problem but what's going on here is the fact that when we're not getting proper folate and we're not activating it and we're not blending it with b12 we're not recycling homocysteine back into our methionine and we completely the, the system can't run properly it, it can get by for a little bit but it's not designed to run this way efficiently at this point, we have to eat protein. The only way that we can run this system is to eat protein and hopefully convert it into SAMe. And, then, and once we have a high amount of homocysteine going into the blood, it causes all types of problems. Um, homocysteine is a potent substance that is not supposed to be in high amounts in the blood. It's linked to uh, arterial plaque. It's linked to blood clots. Um, it's linked to a bunch of horrible stuff. This most likely is the reason that the folic acid is allowing a problem to increase cancer by about 20%. If we're not able to reuse our homocysteine and recycle it back into the system the way it's supposed to, where all these other components are either made or converted or reduced or whatever it might be, we're, we're just not running our engine, essentially. We're, we're like 
puttering down the road at like 12 miles an hour with our car blowing smoke out and we're like i don't get it what's going wrong everything seems fine so when i learned the system and learned how my body feels when i'm not supporting the system properly or eating something that doesn't support it properly or drinking too much alcohol which is related to this whole fe- uh, folate problem um it, it really started my healing became completely different i finally started understanding what I was doing, why I was feeling, and what my body was trying to do to get by. And by researching these things and going further into it, I learned how to get pretty much the whole system functioning for the most part. It's not that now that I understand this, everything's peachy keen. I still have times that I don't feel amazing, but learning this got me from feeling like crap all the time to getting back to feeling a little bit better. So... I would like to make more of these videos, but I've realized the hard way that it's extremely difficult to put these together and say the right things without leading people down the wrong road information or um, putting myself into some type of implicated responsibility. Um, if you enjoyed this, let me know. Give me some feedback. Try to share this with your friends or other health, health groups. And uh, let me know what kind of stuff you're stuck on or what you've done that's helped you with this. And let's try to figure out how to heal because there's a whole bunch of people out there that are just depending on each other in these groups to try to figure out how to get by. And that's really why I wanted to make these because when I read people's struggles, I see why these things are happening and why people get stuck in certain spots and why there's a lot of questions that people don't really understand because the system is complex and nobody's really laid it out like this. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and uh, good luck on your healing.